I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on trigonometric identities. We'll take three identities in this particular video as a review on this particular topic. What you really know, need to know is basic trigonometric Pythagorean identities, which are sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1, 1 plus tan square x equals to secant square x and you should know that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x correct so that is the basic which you should know to prove these identities let us see how to prove them one by one so let me begin with the last one here which is uh, cos x over 1 minus sine x minus 1 over cos x equals to tan x. So whenever we want to prove an identity, we start from one side and show that that is equal to the other side. So we call normally this as the left hand side and this is the right hand side. You always start from the more complicated one. So in this case, left hand side is more complicated we can actually simplify and get the result what is shown on the right side right so let's begin with the left hand side which is for us cos x over 1 minus sine x minus 1 over cos x now you can take a common denominator which is 1 minus sine x times cos x cross multiply so you get cos square x minus 1 minus sine x now it's kind of important to write this in bracket sometimes you may if you write straight you may miss out that this becomes positive when you open right okay now now at this stage what we could do here is we could write cos square x as 1 minus sine square x so we'll get all these terms in the numerator as uh, sine terms right so we'll write cos square x rearranging this formula sine square x plus cos square x is 1 so cos square x is 1 minus sine square x right so these formulas can be rearranged so cos square x is 1 minus sine square x here we'll open the bracket we get minus 1 and plus sine x is that clear to you denominator will keep as such 1 minus sine x times cos x See, the idea is tan x is sine over cosine. So we already have that cos term here, right? So that helps. So we'll just keep it. Okay. Now, 1 and minus 1 cancel out. So we have sine x minus sine square x. I've just rearranged the two signs, right? So sine x minus sine square x. And here we have 1 minus sine x times cos x. Now, I can take sine x common in the numerator. Once I do that, I get 1 minus sine x in the numerator. And the denominator still is 1 minus sine x times cos x. Now you can see what we did was we factored out 1 minus sine x, which now can be cancelled. So once you cancel that, you get sine x over cos x. Correct? Which is tan x perfect which is your right hand side so that is how we show that left side is equal to right side and we have proved our first identity is that clear to you so these are the steps to be followed to prove the identities now i would like you to pause the video and answer the other two right let's look into the solution Now I'll take up sine square x over secant plus 1. Now secant x is what? Let's try to understand this also. So secant x is basically 1 over cos x. Correct? Secant x is 1 over cos x. Okay. So we'll again start with the left hand side in this case. Seems to be more complicated. But you know you could have started from anywhere. But this we'll prefer. It has got the secant also. So it is sine square x over secant x 
plus 1. Now, sin square x could be written as 1 minus cos square x, right? I hope you remember. So, how do we get this? Last time also we did it. You know, sin square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. So, from here, you can write sin square x as equals to 1 minus cos square x. So, that is the difference of square, right? So, we are going to use difference of square to factor. Secant x can be written as 1 over cos x. And here we have plus 1. So, this numerator could be written as 1 plus cos x times 1 minus cos x. Clear? How did I get that part? Well, if you remember, we know what is a plus b times a minus b equals to? Well, that is a square minus b square. So, 1 square minus cos square x, 1 plus cos x times 1 minus cos x. That's how we get it. Okay. Now, in this case, we'll take a common denominator of cos x and we'll get 1 plus cos x. So, this cos x can now move upwards. So, we are left with 1 plus cos x times 1 minus cos x and here we have what? I will rewrite this as, look at it like this. We have 1 plus cos x, correct? Okay. Divided by this means it could be written as cos x over 1. Do you see that part? Right? Okay. Now we could cancel these, right? As soon as you cancel, you could now multiply this with these and you get what? You get cos x minus cos square x. That is exactly what we wanted. So that is our right hand side. So once again, we have shown how left hand side is equal to right hand side. And therefore, we have proven the identity. Is that perfectly fine, right? Simple steps. But if you organize yourself, then it is very simple. Now let's look into the last question. Now let us see how to prove 1 minus tan square x divided by 1 plus tan square x equals to 1 minus 2 sin square x. Now remember, there are always many ways to prove the identities, right? So, you might have a different solution. That is also correct. We'll start with left hand side again. 1 minus tan square x over 1 plus tan square x. Now, what is 1 plus tan square x? 1 plus tan square x is secant square x. Correct? So, I could replace this with secant square x. And what is secant x? Secant x is 1 over cos x, right? So that should help me to prove this identity, right? So I'll write this as 1 minus tan square x over secant square x, correct? Since 1 plus tan square x is secant square x. And secant square x is 1 over cos square x, right? Okay. So I'm still maintaining tan, right? I'm writing this as 1 over cos square x. Well, that is to say, I'm writing this as 1 minus tan square x and everything, I'm going to multiply this by cos square x, right? That is 1 over cos square x, so it gets multiplied by cos square x. You get the idea. Now, tan square x could have been written as 1 minus sin square x over cos square x, right? And we are actually multiplying this by cos square x. Perfect. Let's take it further on this side of the page and then continue. So when I open my bracket, I get this as equal to cos square x minus sin square x over cos square x times cos square x. Correct? Now we can cancel these two. So what do we get? We get cos square x minus sin square x. What do we need? We need 1 minus 2 sin square x. So, I will write cos square x as 1 minus sin square x. And I already have sin square x with a negative sign. Combining these two, I get 1 minus 2 sin square x, which is equal to right hand side. So, we have again shown that left side is equal to right hand side. Perfect. So, that is how we could do it. Now, there are so many other ways to do it. The other alternative method could have been that we will not solve it, but I will just show you. 
we could have written tan as sin over cos. In that case, we get 1 minus sin square x over cos square x. Correct? 1 plus sin square x over cos square x. Now, if I multiply by cos square x, both numerator and denominator, I get cos square x minus sin square x in the numerator and I get cos square x plus sin square x in the denominator. Now, cos square x plus sin square x is 1. So, what do we get? We get cos square x minus sin square x. Wow. So, what we got was this stage. Do you see that part? So, at times, we could actually hit the jackpot, just getting the right steps. So, if I would have followed this method in three steps, I would have got to this stage. And then, finally, my answer by breaking cos square x as 1 minus sin square x. And finally, writing this as 1 minus 2 sin square x. Does make sense to you. Right. So, in trigonometric identities, we may follow any path, but the idea is that you will definitely get to the other side since it's an identity, right? It is true. So, unless and until you do a mistake in between, you will definitely get your result. It may be longer at times, shorter at times, doesn't matter. So, it doesn't really make much difference, two, three steps, but if you get through the shortest method, it is always the best. So, I hope you understand and appreciate that trigonometric identities can easily be proven with the help of just few standard formulas, which are mainly trigonometric Pythagorean identities, right? So, if you apply them correctly, you will definitely get your result. I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.